In today's video, we're going to be tying a streamer called Coffee Sparkle Minnow. First thing we're going to do is start off the Daiichi 2220 hook and a medium black cone. And you're going to want to put some lead wire down on the body. You can use any size of lead wire. I had some here that's a little thin, so you can see I kind of doubled it up by the cone there. So I think I'm using 015. It's best to probably use 020 or 025 uh, for this fly. We're using some brown Vivas 6 aught thread and you're just going to want to secure your lead wire. It doesn't have to be pretty, just make sure it is not going anywhere. Now the first thing we're going to do is tie in the tail. tail is made up of some marabou in three different colors. Uh, first color that we're going to lay down is white, and you want this tail to be about one and a quarter of the length of the shank of the hook, so just over the length of the shank of the hook. We're just going to lay this down here right at the, the back. You can tie in all the marabou at once if you like, but I like this marabou to be perfectly stacked. Uh, this fly is meant to kind of look like it has layers, so you want all those layers uh, to be perfectly aligned. So white is going to be the belly of the fly, because most minnows have white bellies. You're going to have tan in the middle, and then dark olive on the top. So the next color is some ginger or tan, and you're just going to want to make sure that you've got the tips the same length of the white marabou, and just tie that in right on top. This is where you want it to be perfectly stacked. And I just kind of wrap the marabou forward a little bit with each stack just to kind of even out the, the body. You don't want to have a body that's kind of got too much material at the back. And the last color here is some olive. I'm just using a single little blood quill marabou piece for each of these. You don't want to use too much. It's pretty easy to get carried away and stack on too much marabou. So less is more. And honestly, I'm kind of using quite a bit. If I was to do this over again, I'd probably tie it with a little bit less if I was filling up my, my box with these. Trim out the olive. Now we're ready for the flash. For this you can either use root beer or copper colored crystal flash. We're going to tie three or four strands on each side, just enough to give it a little bit of flash. go. Trim out all the ends. Trim it so that's the length of the tail. There we go. So that is the tail. Let me get my fly here adjusted a little better so it's straight on camera. Now we're going to make a short little dubbing loop. When I say short, you only want to make it about three to four inches. We're going to take this dubbing loop here to the back of the hook. And I'm going to use a dubbing spinner. I happen to be using a CNF one, but any of them will work. And we are going to take some pearl colored ice dubbing. Now just a warning, with this fly you're going to burn through some ice dubbing. So if you're going to be filling up your box and tying a lot of these, then buy a lot of ice dubbing. So a uh, pretty big clump of ice dubbing here. And I just slam it into my loop. And I'm going to give it a spin. Don't worry if you get some of the marabou pieces stuck in there. It's not the end of the world. Once you get it spun up, I like to brush it out. So I just kind of tease some of those fibers out of there. Now 
Now, you're going to want two hackle pliers for this fly, so I'm going to just take my hackle pliers and get that ice dubbing on there. Then I'm going to just pull it back and out of the way, and I'm just going to hang my hackle pliers off the back of the vise there. Now I'm going to take my thread here. I'm going to creep it just a little bit away from that, uh, that other dubbing loop that I made. That way I don't snag any of it. And we're going to make a larger dubbing loop this time. So this one will be oh, about five, six inches. And take your thread all the way up to the eye of the hook. Now we're going to use some gold ice dubbing. You're going to want to use even more this time. So you're really going to want to load up this dubbing loop with lots and lots of gold ice dub. Now you can make brushes if you if you don't want to do these dubbing loops. You can pre-make all this. You can use some um, brush wire and they make little tables or you can make your own wire brushes and that honestly is probably the way to do it if you're going to be doing these in quantity. So, But I think the originator tied them in dubbing loops when he developed this fly. So I'm loading this dubbing loop here pretty good. I think we've got just about enough. And we will spin it up. See how nice and shaggy that one is. And again, give it a little bit of a tease just to stand up all those fibers. You're going to make a bit of a mess. Not a good reason to maybe do them all at once on your wire brush maker. Then clip in with your second hackle plier. And I'll just take my thread and I'm just going to wrap back just a little bit, just enough so I can get that, whoopsie, get that started there at the back. So now we're just going to take this. dubbing loop here. Just wrap it forward and you're going to want to brush all the fibers back with each wrap. Then once you get to the head of the fly, you can just capture it with your thread. Trim out the excess. I'll we'll lock it down with just a couple more. And if you want, you can tease it out again. Once everybody's kind of in place here, tease it so all the fibers go backwards. All right, now, my little stone foam brush that I've been using has Velcro on one side little comb on the other. So I'm just going to get on the underside of this fly. I'm just going to part the fly right down the middle. You can also use your fingers too. So just part it down the middle. And we're going to take this pearl dubbing loop and we're just going to fold it on the underside of the fly. Now once you do that, kind of stroke all the long fibers back too as you do that. Then you can just capture that with your thread. Give it a couple tight wraps. Make sure it's centered. If it is, you can trim out that one. What that's going to do is it's just going to give you a continuously white belly on the underside of this fly, just like a little sculpin minnow. And essentially, we are finished. So we can whip finish here real quick. I'll double whip finish, that one slipped a little bit.
That is a finished coffee sparkle minnow. And you can see there the belly has white underneath it, just like a natural minnow would be. Now this fly is very, very deadly, especially up north in Montana, Wyoming. Looks kind of like a gaudy little thing, but man, does it fish. So give them, give them a tie. And remember, buy lots and lots of ice dubbing, because you can see there I've tied about five of them and I've gone through quite a bit of that pack, so I've probably got about half of it left. So you're gonna burn through some ice dubbing. Um, you can make them in wire brushes, makes everything a lot easier. Oh, I forgot, one last step. The original had a dark streak going down the back, so you can take a permanent marker, either black or dark brown, and just darken the top of the fly, just like a, uh, a regular bait fish or minnow would have as a dark top and a light underbelly. That is coffee sparkle minnow.